a look at this. It's the new Kia Sportage. And unlike me, this thing is really important. And that's because the Sportage is Kia's best-selling car in the UK. So this new model has got some seriously big boots to fill. And you know what? It's off to a great start because not only do we have a very striking new design, but there's also loads of tech on the inside taken from its big sibling, the Sorento. And today we're gonna to be getting our first look at the new Sportage. But before we go any further, you know what to do by now. Hit the thumbs up button if you like what you see and subscribe for more awesome videos just like this one. Now, before we start looking around the new Sportage, I thought it'd be a good idea to see where it all began. And we've got it right here, Gen 1 Kia Sportage. Now, this was actually launched back in 1993, meaning it's just as old as I am. Well, this one isn't because this is one of the later models at 2003. But what I find quite interesting is it kind of shows you how the family SUV has developed because what we're looking at here is something that is very much reminiscent of an off-roader. Whereas if we go and look at the new Sportage, it's all about premium and affordable luxury. So we've got a car that looks far more striking. I think what really grabs your attention when you first see the new Sportage are these razor sharp LED headlights. Now, I don't think they're to everybody's taste from what I've seen so far, but to me, it just gives the car such a big road presence and it gives the car some aggression too, which you know is always something that I like. Nice large grille as well. This, by the way, is the GT line. Now, that means it's gonna be towards the top of the Sportage range. We don't know what the entry level cars look like just yet, but I presume it's gonna have less of these gloss black elements. Also, can we just talk about this paint? It's called Experience Green. It's so rare that we see launch cars in green and I'm all for it. It is a really lovely finish. A little bit further around, we've got gloss black trim around the edges of the wheel arches and down the skirts of the car as a nod to its crossover roots. Uh, these are 18 inch wheels, but I'm told we can also go up to 19s too. Moving further back, we've got gloss black around the wing mirrors. And what I wanted to point out was actually this two-tone gloss black roof because it's exclusive to the European market. So if you go somewhere outside of Europe and you pick up a Sportage, this will be body colored. So yeah, it makes us Europeans feel pretty damn special. Kia has launched its new Sportage on a brand new production platform, which is optimized for a range of electrified powertrains. Now, I'm not gonna go into the specifics just now because I'm gonna get onto that a little bit later. Now, you actually have two different types of Sportage depending on where you buy it in the world. So there's a global car, which is kind of seen as a long wheelbase version, and the European car, which you see here, which is kind of like a slightly shorter model. Now, that being said, it's still actually a little bit longer than the outgoing car. So we have a 10 millimeter increase on the wheelbase and 30 millimeter in length. It's also been specifically tuned for European roads on the Nürburgring. And to go along with that, you've got electronically controlled dampers. So depending on which mode you're in, you can stiffen or slacken things off for a more sporty and composed ride. Oh damn, this is a really nice place to be. In fact, it feels like a huge improvement over the old Sportage. Now that doesn't come actually as a huge surprise because we've already seen the jump Kia took with the new Sorento. In fact, the vent design has been lifted from the Sorento and does a great job of framing the dashboard. Metal trim around the dashboard and steering wheel add to the premiumness, as do these part leather seats, but it's the good part with leather in the middle and some Alcantara down the sides. There's a new steering wheel design, which is wonderfully simple, and it comes with the new Kia logo as well as physical buttons. And that's a theme throughout the rest of the Sportage because we actually have quite a lot of physical shortcut buttons in the center console. So yes, there's a lot of touchscreens in here, but you're still gonna be able to press a button to get somewhere. In fact, on this panel just above the center console, you can actually switch between either the climate settings or touch buttons for different shortcuts for the infotainment screen. And speaking of the panel, it's something that really steals the show when you step inside because it absolutely 
dominates the cabin. Now, what it is is essentially two 12.3 inch screens, one for the infotainment screen and the other for the digital cockpit. But Kia has done a great job of making it look like it's all part of one big panel. It all runs the latest version of Kia's infotainment software. Now, we first saw that on the new Sorento, and I actually think it's one of the best in the market because it looks really techy and is very responsive. It even comes with my favorite app, the Sounds of Nature app, which means that you can listen to your favorite tracks like a lively forest or a rainy day. There's a digital cockpit as well, which comes with Kia's clever blind spot cameras. So basically when you're indicating left or right, you'll see your blind spots in either the speedo or the rev counter. And speaking of safety, there are also loads of new autonomous driver modes, including a new cruise control that's based off the sat nav, so it'll slow down when you approach tight and twisty corners. Unfortunately, I can't try any of those new systems out just yet because I'm in a studio, but when I can get this out on the road, I'll be very happy because the Sportage's cabin is a seriously nice place to be. The new Sportage's wheelbase is a little bit longer than the old car, and that should open up a bit more room in the cabin. So while I'm sat in the back, leg room with the driver's seat in my position is, I've got loads to play with actually, and the same goes for headroom. And what's worth pointing out is that we actually have the panoramic roof in here, which always cuts into headroom by a few millimeters. But still, if you're six foot and over, you'll be fine. I'm just under six foot and I fit in here absolutely perfectly. Now, there are some other things to point out back here as well. The first one is this coat hanger. Now, I'm not wearing a coat, but if you're on a long journey, you could just pop a coat on the back of the driver's or passenger seat. Or if you don't have that and your driver is a maniac, you've got something to grab onto. You also have what's really nifty are USB chargers in the backs of the seats. They're regular USB, so they're not USB-Cs, but you can either use a converter or just if you're like me, are still using the old system, then that will do you down to the ground. I think we've got a leather effect style pouch in the back of the seats. And while the window line is actually quite high, you can still see out of it fine. And I think that's been done for safety. And the last thing I really like about the new Sportage is that you can recline the seats really far back. So I'm kind of sat as I normally would be, but on a long car journey, I can just recline and sleep. I'm a big fan of the new LED tail light design. And while we don't have a light bar that runs across the back, we do have this kind of black surround that makes it look quite aggressive and premium, which seems to be the theme of the new Sportage. Now we've also got a little gloss black wing at the back highlighted with a bit of metal trim. I kind of feel as though this looks a little bit long. You've got a relatively narrow rear window and quite a lot of bodywork back here with the new Kia logo. And at the bottom, you've also got a metal guard just in case you want to go soft roading. Now over to the boot, which is got an electronic tailgate. Now we don't actually have any official figures for the boot space just yet, but the old Sportage came in at around 490 liters and Kia says it's probably gonna be a little bit bigger on this new car. Now, crucially, if you went for the hybrid version of the old Sportage, then your boot space shrunk to 430 odd liters. But they've said with this new platform, if you go for a hybrid model, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna cut into boot space. There are some nifty tricks back here as well. So not only do we have some underfloor storage, so you can put I don't know, grocery overfill down there. I'm not very domesticated. But you've also got these little kind of grab handles at the side where if you pull them, then the rear bench falls down effortlessly. How handy is that? Engines. So we've got a couple of petrols to choose from, a 1.6 litre motor available either as a 150 horsepower car or 180. And there's also a couple of diesels as well. Still a 1.6 motor, but it comes with either 115 or 136 horsepower. Now, all of those cars, bar the entry level diesel, come with a 48 volt mild hybrid system, which will not only give you a little bit of a push when pulling away from a set of traffic lights or a junction, but it'll also eke out a little bit more fuel as well. 
But if you want to take things to the next level, you'll want a full hybrid, and there are two different ones to choose from. Now there's the self-charging hybrid, which has 230 horsepower, and that'll give you some electric running for short periods when you're running at lower speeds. But the big one here is the plug-in hybrid. Not only does it produce 265 horsepower, but as the name suggests, you can plug it into a charger and run on electric energy alone for up to 35 miles. And you have free choice of when you use that electric power because driving a PHEV is all about freedom. The last thing then to cover off is pricing. Only problem is Kia hasn't announced pricing for the UK just yet. Now, if you go off the current Sportage, it wouldn't surprise me if prices were to start around about £25,000, whereas this GT line that you see here is probably going to be closer to 31, pounds 32000 now, I don't know if that's great value for money just yet because I'd need to get behind the wheel and drive it. But so far, this new Sportage has made a great first impression, particularly on the inside, as that is a huge upgrade over the old car. Now, hopefully we'll be behind the wheel of this in the near future, but in the meantime, you know what to do. You can find plenty of deals on new and used Kia Sportages by heading over to yesauto.co.uk.